Hi everyone, Christine here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, A Dash of Soy, the channel for home cooks that want to learn more about Chinese cooking and culture. Today, I'm going to show you the top essentials you need to pick up at Asian supermarkets. If you want weekly recipes, go on to my website at adashofsoy.com for more. Christine here. Um, welcome to A Dash of Soy and I'm so excited to go shopping today. I'm going to the Ranch 99 Chinese supermarket to basically get all of my Asian and Chinese essentials and I'm so excited to walk you through my process and what are my go-to favorites to go pick up when I go to the Chinese supermarket. You know everyone has lived through the pandemic and during quarantine the only thing you think about during these essential like supermarket trips, you have to think about what's versatile. What kind of meats and vegetables is very versatile that you can cook at home, you can make multiple cuisines with it. And during quarantine, I really thought about that. So that's why I'm shooting this video just to show you that these are the top things that you can really use across a lot of dishes. I hope you'll find this helpful and useful and let's go shopping. Alright, so I just finished buying everything at the Ranch 99 supermarket and I'm very pleased. I'm going to talk you through what I got. So first things first, when I first walked through, the vegetable section is right in front of me. And depending on the time of day, if you go like later in the day, I would suggest going to the fresh seafood section first because later time in the day, the fresh seafood might be almost all sold out. So if you want to get fresh seafood, head on straight to the seafood, uh, live seafood section first. But when I go to the vegetable section, I like to pick out the two top vegetables I always pick is choy and choy sum. So a lot of you probably don't know that these two vegetables are like the bread and butter of vegetables for Chinese food. Like they're in everything that's very subtle, the vegetable, and pairs really well with a lot of stuff. Noodle soups, stir fry, it doesn't have a very strong uh, fragrance, so it complements food really well. Those are the two vegetables that I'll always usually pick. They're not super seasonal, they're pretty year-round, these two types of vegetables, so it's a great thing to pick up. And then I always like going to the tofu section. Um, I like to pick up the soft uh, silken tofu because, again, it's very versatile. I can make soft tofu soup with it. Yeah, it goes great with soups. And then I also pick up this uh, yokzi daofu, which is like a, it's a type of egg tofu and it's in a tube and it's actually very great for steamed dishes. You put it on the bottom of uh, steamed dishes like steamed pork belly or steamed like black bean sauce spare ribs. Um, it's just, kids love it. It's a nice soft egg texture. It's called uh, yokzi daofu. So if you're ever in the market, like pick that up. It also has kind of long shelf life too. So after, you know, the tofu section, I go to the meat section and Chinese people, we love our pork. Uh, I think a lot of our dishes has pork because it's relatively inexpensive. So a lot of Chinese dishes have pork in there. So the top pork choices that I always get is the lean pork, which has basically no fat on it. And that is the pork, part of the pork that you use to make soup. Okay, because um, us Chinese people, we don't like our soup uh, super fatty, like all the fat from the pork to float to the top. We like it really, we just like the flavor of the meat, but we don't want the fat with this. So lean pork is the perfect protein to go with to make soup. And then after that, I also get the spare ribs. So spare ribs at Ranch i 9 now, it's all packaged for you, it's nice. So what you're looking for for making that like black bean sauce spare ribs or like sweet and sour ribs is that like 70-30 ratio. So you want like 70% meat and about like 30% like fat because when it's too lean and there's no fat when you're eating it, it's it's very dry you know pork can dry out so you gotta look a, look for a little bit of pork for that uh pai guan okay so and then the third choice of pork that i like to go with is pork butt which is muay tao it's also called pork shoulder somewhere like pork shoulder or pork butt 
But basically, this part of the pork is like the most popular like pork for making anything, making um, tasu, uh, those little stir fries with the little slices of meat, pork noodle soup. If this I like to make it with my jaj uh, Korean jajamyeon noodles. Uh, this pork is the most versatile, and I'll tell you why because this pork has good amount of meat and fat ratio. So a lot of the pork that you use that you eat at restaurants with that simple stir fry with that pork in it it's usually most likely it's this pork because the meat just tastes better when you eat it yeah you tell is this protein <laughs> is used like everywhere so you gotta pick that up and then beyond that a oh, last part is pork belly so I know some places do have pork belly now but um, Chinese people we like the pork belly with the skin okay so this is why you make pork belly with the skin you can make roast pork at home uh, you can make that pork belly steamed pork belly uh, with shrimp paste so the pork skin has that nice little chewy texture on top and I actually really like that like not a lot of places American supermarkets, they usually cut out the, the skin off, but only Asian markets still keep that pork belly skin on. So that's very important. So pick pork belly up. And after that, I like I like the uh, looking at chicken. So chicken at Chinese supermarkets, you would look for the silky chicken, which is that black chicken, it's called um, silky chicken. That is the chicken that you pick up for making Chinese soup, so it has double the antioxidants of re regular chicken, so that's why it's essential for you to pick those up for making some nice, hearty, uh, herbally Chinese soup at home. The Chinese supermarkets, they also have a free-range chicken, so it's called Zhao Dai Gai in Chinese. So it's different from the whole chickens that you get at American supermarkets. The white whole chickens that you pick up at the Chinese supermarket taste different it's free range and it's perfect for steaming a whole chicken chicken pho making a uh, soy sauce chicken just to name a few so one of the important things that differentiates chinese supermarkets from other supermarkets is the fresh live seafood so if you go there you should always pick up something live like because it's fresh <laughs> fresh you can make a nice dinner that night with fresh seafood it tastes so much better it's not frozen so th they have fresh um, live fish from the tank i love picking up a live fish fishmonger actually helps gut it for you and scale it for you so you just take it back home and then just steam it um, that's a great service that they have there so steam fish is a great one you can pick whatever type of seasonal fish they have in the tank like black bass or catfish um just to name a few and then fresh seafood like i know that at least in the bay our crab season's almost over so it's a good time to pick up some crab if you still have it ramp or lobsters pick up one of those fresh seafood to bring home to cook that night okay and then um, i always look at noodles because us Chinese people, we love our noodles, right? So I always pick up Three Ladies brand rice vermicelli. Um, this vermicelli I use for like a pork noodle soup. You can make a pan fry noodle, make spring rolls with it, boom you, just to name a few. So this rice vermicelli is very versatile. So I always pick like a few bags up. And I also pick up udon because udon is also very easy for you to make at home for a quick and easy meal. That's another one. And I always go down the seasoning aisle because I don't go shopping anymore and seasonings is just my thing. I just love looking at seasonings. Like I'll look at what type of new seasonings are out there, what kind of seasonings I can test out. And the ones that I like picking out is a spicy black bean sauce. So that's like a, it's called la dao ban zheng. So it's a spi spicy black bean sauce that you use to make with Mongolian beef. You use that for pandan noodles. So it's basically black bean sauce, but it's spicy. So I really like that nice touch of spiciness with black bean sauce. And I always pick that up. And I also pick up the uh, black bean sauce too, or the actual black beans. Most essential uh, seasoning for Chinese food. Um, after soy sauce, oyster sauce, it's black bean sauce. Like black bean sauce is great for stir fries, uh, steaming your uh, black steaming uh, spare ribs with um, it is just yeah the most important one so 
I always go to the seasonings aisle to see what I need to replenish and um, pick up these few essentials. And sometimes I see what they have on display that's uh, that's ready to make. And uh, sometimes I notice that there's the rice noodle, the fresh rice noodle. So what I like, like the ones you have at dim sum restaurant things. So. I like to pick that up if they have it, just steam or pan fry the next day for breakfast. And the thing is with this rice noodle, you do not put in the fridge because it will harden up. It's like freshly made. So it's supposed to be like left out. You can just leave it out for just a day and then just like steam it either the same day or the next day to eat and that's perfectly fine. But I wouldn't go a few days beyond that. <laughs> so yeah, at the end of my trip, I pick up a bag of Kai bee chips, Kawa bee chips because come on, I'm not, I'm not a monster. I love snacking and that's, Kai bee chips is like the Doritos of like Chinese chips. <laughs> so you gotta have that. It's like the, I love the spicy chips. It's my favorite. So anyway, yeah, I'm so excited to share all of my grocery favorites with you. I hope you found it helpful. You know, next time you go to the store, you can pick up some delicious Chinese essentials that you can make at home. And yeah, I can't wait to see you at the next video. Bye.